hello it's Sarah and today I'm going to work on our March art journal page. We've already gotten through January and I ended up shading around all the snowflakes and I just love how that makes them pop. And February was this little house with home sweet home. I was, I've been going through some family stuff and was just really appreciative of home during February and it was Valentine's Day so I added the hearts but I also added like glossy accents to the windows and different I think I put stickles on the hearts I love it and so as I'm looking out the window we're having our fourth nor'easter and it just started snowing here around 3 3 30 at it's um March 21st, the day after the first day of spring, and I can see it's just the snowy wonderland out my window. So I am really in the mood for spring. I really want spring to spring already. So we're going to do a little spring themed page with just bugs, flowers and bugs. And I love bugs. I'm a critter fan. I don't, I try not to kill them, you know, I mean, you know, within reason. And so I have this picture frame that is my inspiration. And it's just very whimsical. This is a pewter frame. And this is my granddaughter, Maya. And so it has this dragonfly, flowers, a butterfly, a little ladybug down here, and a snail. And I think I'll incorporate all those things. And then you can bring whatever critter or little springtime insect into your creation as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with a 6 by 9 inch, I think it is. Oh boy. Here's the, I'm almost out of paper, but this is a mixed media paper. So it's going to be 6 by 9. I cut a 12 by 9 piece in half to get a 6 by 9. And I'm just going to set that aside for a second and the design so what I did was I just took my sketchbook and I just cut it in half approximately to the size and then I just took my pencil and just sketched a similar shape <clears throat> this is just easier for me I don't have to visualize it <clears throat> and I'm just kinda of, like I changed the head on the dragonfly he just had eyes you know, his little face is underneath or something. Um, but I just gave him a head and put the eyes on the side. You know, so just change it up if you want. I put the ladybug's eyes on the side too. And I don't know what I'll do with my snail. But um, I really love the feel of this. So I'm probably going to do these swirls in the background. There's these little star, little dots. All types of things. Curly, cute, cutesy stuff. So I want to keep it real whimsical. You know how I do. But I wanted to sketch it out to kind of see size-wise what I'm going for. Because when I go to my... Because I'm going to collage. And I know that's a pain in the butt. And we don't have to. But the reason I want to do that is because I'm just going to paint a background. Like, I could just draw everything out on my paper and paint around everything which is fine but I want to do some mixed media on the background so I'm gonna do the background in blues and greens like I'm gonna put a little you know green and blue on here and stencil and um, stamp some and get a little background going and then when I add the focal pieces which are the bugs and the flowers they'll have they won't have that background texture it, I'm gonna use probably um, printed paper so it, I've done this before using jelly plate jelly prints which are colored prints that I've done on the jelly plate but I'm going to use different um, kind of like what's it called recycled envelopes and different things like that so I have a lot of blue green and black there's a little bit of red but probably end up going with just um, printed paper so even if you don't have any printed paper. I've grabbed an old book before. This is some scrapbook paper that I use, but it's really thicker texture. So I like to use the thinner, older, not too old like these. When Allie sent me hers, these are really legit, like, um, not antique, but yeah, I mean antique. This is from 1920. 
it says it right on here august 1920 so this paper is going to be a lot more fragile to collage with so you never know if you once you get it on there you, it might start to pill on you so just be careful um and that being said i'm going to use it at some point but sometimes i just like to like this i think is a little you can feel the texture of the paper so i'm going to go through i'm going to choose a few of these papers to draw my little bugs on and then i'm going to cut them out um probably let's see I don't know if I want to use the colors. I think I'm just going to go with black and white for the background colors. Like this is more green, I think. It's a different color green. Like see how it's much darker? I mean, I just don't want it to be all monotone, but this, this is a pretty blue. Like I should just use this for the background. That's what I should do. I should just take all these blues and collage my background. I think that's what I'm going to do. Alright, see it just comes to me. Look, I might even use a little piece of map because it has blues in it. So I'm just going to grab some old um, and I'm going to use the greens for the grass. Perfect. Okay, so I have a couple different color greens. I'm going to rip these into different shapes. Um, little scraps. I don't know if I'll add, see here's another blue. I probably won't use the red. Maybe a little bit of black because, ooh, look, this is a good piece of blue. Not really. It's not, it's not very blue. I may have other matte papers that have a lot more blue on them and put them in the collage for the um, sky. I'll just rip these pieces of blue off on these matte papers. All right, so I'm going to clear my desk and get ready to collage, and I'll be right back, and I'm going to create my background with collage, and then maybe I'll just draw these on white paper and collage them on. That might be what I do. All right, so you never know what you're going to get. I'll be right back. All right, you know what the funny thing is? When I created, um, where's my other... Our last year's journal which is right here I'm gonna look for this I did a complete painted paper piece I think it's called painted paper I just want to find it I think it was the owl this one and we completely did this with each piece of the design I'm not gonna get that uh, in, intense with it this time but I'm doing the background the same way because I am going to um, use a piece of deli paper to create my grass so that I can get this nice defined line in between. But yeah, um, see some, and, I, and you know what? I think, I'm pretty sure I have different color papers in baggies somewhere and I have no idea where. Um, I can think for a second but you know what I think we're going to be fine I came up with enough colors of blue just you recycling um, envelopes okay so I've got my collage page here and I like to use this deli paper just so I don't have to keep cleaning everything up and I'm going to put some out and grab an old crusty uh, this one this one looks like a really good one. Um, let me just set this aside. My desk tends to get so messy. So let me clean up as I go today, Sarah. Okay. There we go. Not bad. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to collage to about uh, here. And then I'll use a piece of deli paper. So like this, I will create a background line so that I know where to put the green paper. Oops. And then we'll trim it off at afterwards. So I'm going to collage this entire spot with blue. And I love some of these, the colors are going to be, I think I need smaller pieces though. 
Um, so, just going to start with, because I like the variation in color and the, de the variation in texture or design, I mean, see, how, look at this bold stripe and then this, whatever that would be called, <laughs> cross hatching. But yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And then I did find a couple pieces of the blue from the map, so that's all going in there too. So this could take me a minute. I'll start on camera and then I'm going to go off camera and finish because I tend to make super long videos and I know you guys for the most part like that because it's real time and you get to see actually what I am doing in real time. So um, I get it but it is a long process to do this so I'm just going to spare you the and you can do both sides um, of the paper and it really will adhere better but it's not necessary um, because you're going to give it a coat afterwards too but I mean it definitely will help get all these see and I'm not a stickler for things like if I was selling this or you know it's going to go in my own little art journal so I'm not going to be too crazy with how perfect it is you know I want to have fun and enjoy the process that's exactly why I do this really don't do it for any other reason you know unless like I said unless I'm selling it I just want to enjoy the creative process so I'm gonna finish up off camera and I'll be back when we start doing the green. Sorry, I just had that little piece. See, like stuff's gonna happen. It's not gonna be perfect, but uh, I will be happy. That's the main objective. Okay, guys? So I'll see you in a few, and we'll start doing the green. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing, cover this little piece of deli paper with, and then that'll give me my nice edge up against the blue. And I mean, this isn't as blue as like, there's a little, this is actually looking green on camera, but it is bluish. So when I paint everything, it'll come out fine. Um, so that's your opportunity to, you know, see what I did and maybe change yours accordingly. You know what I mean? So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and I have a, a brush here. It is cold and it is, you know what, the flakes are, I don't think we're getting as much as they had predicted initially. Um, I'm in South Jersey and they were saying like a foot. So I'm going to go above the line on here and then I'm going to cut it out so um, and I have three different colors of green believe it or not I did manage to find three these are different they're subtle but this one's super bright right here so I think I'll put this along the edge here um, I think like up in Pennsylvania it got it worse actually they were thinking it was going to be like right along I-95 uh, but it stayed anyway it stayed more north it's just kind of interesting how these storms have a mind of their own mother nature she will do as she wishes all right so basically you get that on there and I'm going to go on underneath a little better. And we'll attach this to our page in one piece. And you can see the line behind it. So we'll just cut that and then glue it down and then um, trim everything off at the end. So I'll go ahead and finish collaging and I'll be back. Okay, it, it is still kind of wet and that's just me. I'm a heavy hand and I put too much glue. So I mean... It takes a long time. I mean, you can do this 
with a glue stick. I mean, but then you should probably, like if you don't have Mod Podge or Collage Podge, use gel medium. People use gel medium as an, as an adhesive. Um, so use what you have. And then we're going to take and cut this horizon line along the line I drew. I think I'll leave the edges, but I'm going to go along. <laughs> Let me see. I think it would help me if I did have a straight line on the bottom so that I could do placement. I think that would just help me. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to cut along the bottom. And again, I'm, I'm not a, uh, you know, professional at this. This is just kind of wing it situation. It's a wing it situation. All right. Then I'm going to adhere this to this. And it's, a, like I said, it's a little uneven. And I mean... I should probably glue better because I, as it dries, you do get little air bubbles underneath. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not worrying about it. Like I can actually trim this now, which I, this is fun to do. It's the big reveal, but you just kind of go from the back and butt your scissors up against the paper. Be careful because you know you don't want to cut the actual edge of the paper. But um, mixed media paper is a definitely a um, a thicker like ply paper or weight I should say right it's a uh, whatever weight and you don't have to use mixed media paper you could use chipboard you can use whatever because the way I'm gonna bind oops I can tell I'm cutting into the edge of the paper a little the way I'm gonna bind the, the journal at the end of the year like I did last year's is a super easy accordion style and it does kind of work. I mean, I don't know if the thicker thinness of, I mean, you can tell this is pretty decent thickness of paper and I think it'll work. So, um, what was I, I was thinking like cardstock even, but it's just the difference is that this is meant to have all the mediums on it and it'll hold up. A lot of times different papers, the pulp stuff starts to pill and it just would be disappointing to put all that work into it and then have it um, kind of want to fall apart on you. I'm going to like, what am I going to do? I kind of just want to use glue glue. Is that going to look good enough? Like I left blank spaces and that's fine because I'm, see how I left blank spaces in there? Because we're going to stencil and paint and stamp on top of this. So white space isn't a biggie. Yeah, I think I'll use Mod Podge. Just continue on my adventure with the Mod Podge. Um, and just, ooh, I got it on my face before. I don't know what I was doing. Um, it is cold. It is the flakes are getting smaller, but it looks beautiful out there. Um, but I am so ready for spring, you guys. I just, I just am. I need my 50s. It hasn't even been a 50 degree stretch here for a while. We've been down in the 40s for a while. And I mean, I know a lot of you guys up north in Washington State and Minnesota and Michigan, you all have cold, cold winters, but I'm spoiled. We don't generally have 30s or below at all. It's it's rarely 32. Like today it says 32, and it's rarely in the 30s. I mean, whoops, it tends to be in the 40s. Like we'll get stretches of uh, 40s and 50s. Anyway, this has been a pretty crazy month with us with these nor'easters um and i'm just hoping it'll go out like a lamb <clears throat> so i am looking for that line but again it doesn't have to be perfect i'm just going to really make sure the bottom is kind of lined up and i could use a card like an old um gift card and make sure that's adhered but 
and I think I will. But you know what? I could, I could, I'm such a heavy hand. Like that's the thing. And this is all collaged on, so I don't want to peel off what I, all the green paper. But just, and I can see the white, the the line I drew there. But you know what? I'm gonna cover this with so much stuff. But I like it. I do. Uh, all right. Kirby, what are you doing? She didn't get a walk today. Oh, no. All right. Yeah, I'm not going out in this, you nut. It probably needs to dry. All right, I'm going to get this. I'll go see what she wants. Let it dry and get really hard. And then we're going to start painting and adding a little more mixed media esque to it but I think we got a pretty cool background all right you guys I'll see you in a few okay so the next step I want to do and I thought about this because this is one of the things I never understood when I first started doing mixed media is we just did all that why you want to cover it up I'm going to use white acrylic gesso and I'm going to cover up not cover up we're going to do a wash of it, basically. All right, I'm just going to use my good old... And I'm going to take a decent sized brush and give it a coating. Uh-oh. I, I bailed out on Joe. We're, he's making burgers. Oops. But, um, yeah, so I have water in my brush. And I'm just going to give it coating and I want maybe I'll dull down some of that dark dark blue I don't know maybe maybe I don't know I don't know let's just do it I really really love the green that variation and just the design the pattern on the paper just makes it look like grass so that was just a, a bonus see so yeah, I don't want to cover it up so I'm trying to go sheer. It's not my way to be light-handed, but I don't want it to be. So I'm gonna take a um, a paper towel, maybe a baby wipe, and go over and take it off on some of these places. I like it though. So you just have to. I don't know. Now I'm gonna add paint. So I didn't need all that. Just so I'll put it back. Some people say you contaminate the bottle. I don't care. I am not a master artist. It was me, Kirby. <laughs> Kirby, it was me. All right, I'm sticking that in water. And I am going to take my baby wipe. And it's been here a minute. And just, I'm going to take some off. I want to leave it, I, I like this color a lot, so I'm going to take it off that color. And I like the cross hatching, but I'm going to leave it on the darkest blue. Yeah, I just bailed on him because he called his brother and, alright, I got to get back in there. We're tag team and dinner. But I think our background, oopsie, now I just put that in that, all right, whatever, is going to be ready now. I like that. I'm going to do, I'm going to come in and I'm going to edge everything and then we're going to stamp. All right, so I have a little bit more to go and then I'll do a part two. Yes, I'll do a part two when we start adding our focal images. But this, we're not quite done yet, all right? I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and it's the next day. Different shirt, pink again, but it's a workout day. Anywho, all right, I wanna get this background finished. I've gathered up a few mark-making tools, and in this case, it's just gonna be stencils and stamps, basically. Um, I do like to use lids for circles. I love circles. And I've been getting back to this little checkerboard. This is a Tim Holtz stamp. But I mean, a lot of these, these actually are two of my faves and these are recollections. 
I got them both in a old um, Valentine's kit. So again, use what you have. I'm not, you know, I haven't, and I just got a question, uh, Link asked me, do you, have you been going to Hobby Lobby and getting in on all these deals? And no, I have not. But four years ago, or five now maybe, um, I would have. I would have been stocking up, and that's the thing. I have plenty to work with, so I use what I have, and that's what I recommend um, because you don't really need a lot of stuff to do to have fun and make art. So I'm going to do first some stamping, and I'm going to go into the light blue. I'm sorry, the darker blue. This is the Dina Wakely media palette of archival just some colors that she likes but I have these two blues on here I don't really have a lot of different this is kind of a teal blue but I think I'm gonna go into the grass or I might go both I'm not sure I only have this green so I'm really I don't but I'll use paint so again I'm not gonna run out and get green although you know if it's on sale maybe I'll grab green so for right now I'm just gonna get this dark blue on my script stamp and just get some script on here and none of this is your focal point so don't I might even go into the grass with it yeah I think I am because it doesn't look that blue and the green is dark enough so um, let's see I want to do a little more stamping. I really liked this green with this flower stamp I have, and I think, again, probably an older Tim, no, I'm not, this is not necessarily, it may be Tim Holtz or not, I'm not sure, but it's just got little flower, flowers on it, so I'm gonna put them, a few of those here and there on the grass. And, Really, the whole point of this is just to create interest in the background, but again, this is going to be in the background, so not your focal point, and so don't get too, you know, per, like, particular, and I am a heavy hand, and I like things dark, but you may, if yours is turning out light, that's great. It's okay. I want you to, it, it should be yours, right? I'm going to do some circles with this lighter blue up here and what stencils did I grab oh I have a flower stencil and a little um, crosshatch patterned stencil so I like that color that is called ocean by Dina Wakely I'm just stamping it off. Um, so already it's starting to, you know, and then more green. I guess I'm just gonna stencil the green because I don't really have much more green. And this teal, let me see what this looks like. Um, how about these circles? I, I carved this one myself. I kinda like that. I'm gonna go pop a few of them. It's very similar to Ocean. It looks a lot like ocean. So it's hard to kind of tell the difference. Well, no, not, not too hard, especially, you know, on camera. Camera kind of reveals things that I don't see. It's kind of interesting. All right. And you can always, if you're not sure, just step away from it. And this will get busy now. It'll get, to, it'll start looking busy. And um, I guess I'm going to finish off with some black. Although that dark blue looks pretty black, I think I wanted to do um, these music notes. But see, I just got this. This is more of a focal. I don't think I'll do that. I'll do a few black checks. So let me grab my black archival. And I, I am using permanent ink, by the way. You guys know all this stuff. Just for newbies. Just in case. Just a couple of black checks. And you might think, why? Well, because it's contrast, number one, and I will still be covering some of this stuff up. So it's again, it's in the background. So don't, this is a lot right now, okay? We're not done. <laughs> I'm gonna do some, I definitely wanna do green, and I might, I think I might do 
my green with, I was thinking of doing it like with a, um, I love um, neons and metallics, but again, green is not a go-to what I would grab. Um, and I probably do have some it somewhere, I just don't have it at hand. So I am gonna use my citron green and do a few of these. And this is some, I just old, an old piece of, um, I think it's called cut and dry foam or something by Ranger. And I figured I'd just use this. It was in my, my um, bin, uh, my bin of stuff. Citron green. And you know what I'm doing this time, guys? I'm clearing off my desk as I go. And I'm really enjoying that. I'm going to take this little piece, which it's probably, I cut it kind of small, and just go along the grass here. Oh, cute. And make some, what are these? These are little X's kind of. Just gives it a little highlight. Um, that's it. And you know what? I, I'm really, really, really bad at wiping off my stencils. But if you guys are using sprays that are not permanent, you're going to have a mess on your hands if you don't. So you should really clean off your stencils. Just make it a habit, which I don't. But if it's paint, it just tends to dry and gets it, it'll just glop up your stencil so it's still it's not good in e either case to not clean your stencil so i'm um, gonna do some blue i want some more some different um i really wanted swirls of some type but i think i'm gonna paint them i wanted to show you a picture where's my phone i have um a different light switch on every light switch cover pretty much that I have in my house and this is one in my dining room and I love dragonflies so I just wanted to this is such a, a like a theme right because see look the similar with the swirls around it it's just kind of cute right I think I got this at um, Smithville one time it's um this little, the, town, the historic town of Smithville, they call it. And they have a craft fair and stuff. So this is kind of like a ceramic. But look, it's mixed media. Look, there's like leaves up here. I really love it. Like, honestly. And I love how it pulls the colors together. So there's purple. Excuse me, purple, purple. It's just amazing. And green goes just through the middle. Like, I could do it. I think that is a perfect art journal page right there. I should just recreate that. Which, you know, it's too late because I already went with this thing. Anywho, so the swirl is a big deal. Um, but I am going to... Uh, I have my flowers. And I think I'm going to go... You know what? We'll do some blue... This is uh, metallic. We'll do some blue circles. That's what I can do with this metallic paint. And I just kind of make a palette. See, my desk is getting... I'm going to put all this stuff away before I move on. And I think I'm going to go to a part two. So I've got this metallic paint. And I'm going to use, what was I going to use? Some circles? Let's do that. Caps. Uh-oh, I have hairs and things on it. All right, I don't like that. Like, look, come on. You want it to look a little, a little more organized than just blobs of, okay, good enough. So let's, let's leave that one alone. We'll go to this one. I have different sizes, tons of different sizes. I guess this paint is just bloppy or again, guess what guys? I probably just didn't clean off my bottle caps, which is more, say that, just give it a wipe when you're done. And maybe you won't get those blobs. Again, this is a background, so don't worry. Let's put a few green. Um, see, I don't have anything metallic. Oh, gold. Let's go gold. A gold metallic on the grass. And what 
what kind of other bottle caps do I have? I have this one. Put a couple in the sky. I can't resist. Gold is just amazing. And I have, I had, I'm going to do this one too in the, on the grass. Look, I know it's a lot. It looks a mess, but it'll be good. Don't worry. I know you're all worried now. <laughs> all right, guess what? I'm going to let that dry. I have to let it dry now. I should have done this first, but this I'm going to do with white all over the place, and then it'll calm all that down, and it'll push it all into the background. I'm going to wipe this off my palette. See, I'm, I don't want to waste it, but uh, it's too bad. Too bad. Don't watch Cat Hand. Cat Hand won't watch. She does her own thing. Um, okay. So, I guess I should wait. All right, let me dry. I'll be back. Okay, it's dry. I'm going to try one more, um color. I think it's going to be dark. Hmm. I want to do one more thing on the grass. So I'm going to go in with these circles, I guess. Um, okay. And maybe just gently. Oh, I can't be gentle. It's the color. The color is just super dark, but you know what? That's okay. Again, it's background. So Just needed more contrast. It was just, this. the paper is super light. All right, and I am removing stamps from my desk as I go, and I'm so happy. So I have this dragonfly stamp that I probably will use as inspiration for my drawing, and I have this little ladybug stamp, which I may actually use, I don't know. I have these um, flower stamps. I'm gonna use these in the next video because I'm gonna create the focal images in the next video in a part two. But I'm gonna stamp these out onto just a basic, like a plain paper. Everything will be stamped either just onto a book page or something plain. And then I'm gonna adhere them and then create the total. Um, do I want any more of these? No, I'm putting everything away that I'm done with. So I need those, okay, good. I wanted to do a couple more um, hearts Okay, but first I'm gonna take, this is a Prima stamp, I guess. Yeah, oh no, Finnebar by Prima. Goes like this. Anywho, I'm gonna do blue paint circles up there. And I have glitter paint too. But I wanna use this um, Whispering Turquoise and just kinda put it all over to kinda make it, um, the background just blend together instead of using white and then I'll do white um, accent like pops I think so this is what I'm thinking all right I'm gonna cut the piece of this these are big circles too so we'll see how this goes I'm gonna be covering you know a lot and this is a super light blue but let's go let's see what happens I like it. I'm gonna keep going. And this way, if you if you had too much checks and you didn't like it, you can calm that down. But we're not losing the background color. It's staying blue, right? And it's just gonna make it all come together instead of being all different. That's the way I'm describing it. Because when I first started doing mixed media, and I would watch a lot of different videos and stuff. Look, there's a piece of map. Like, you don't want to lose. That's the, the beauty of that collage is, like, there's so much going on under here. Look, there's a little piece of map. That's going to get covered. That's a shame. But because I didn't add a lot of that, I was really going for the blue, the water. Anywho, I just saw that. And um, All right, so I got to do some down here. Um. I really didn't understand the reasoning. I was like, why? You just put all this cool stuff on there and now you're just covering it all up, you know? Um, and there, it's just because 
it is just a background guys so this isn't unless you want to just make a page of cool backgroundy stuff you know and that like actually that's what Kate Crane kind of does her pieces are ba basically backgrounds and then she puts like one little focal image on it like a little angel or a butterfly a, just one butterfly and a, and a word and you know all right so I don't think I I think it kind of pulled kept it I don't know I don't know what it did <laughs> I'm gonna cover a little bit more of this um, checkerboard just a little calm it down a little bit there we go and right here and I think I want to do the same thing to the bottom but I don't know what color I guess this light foliage green would be good and I'm gonna use this flower one instead so again and then I'm breaking out the angle brush so hopefully this is a good color and we won't put it everywhere but let's see what that looks like yes I like it And here's the thing, like that's why with supplies, I tend to use the same stencils over and over and over and over. So how many stencils do you do I really need? And I have <laughs> plenty. But I'm just saying, like, why do I need to see this is super dark over here? I don't like it. Let me see if I can take it off. Because I put gesso, I may be able to wipe this some of this off, but it might just oh good, it's coming off. It could just, um, yeah, but see, I kind of, I lost some of the real whiteness under there. Um, anywho, um, yeah, like if you, once you find something that you like, you're good. And then you're also, another great thing is, <clears throat> because I come from decorative painting where I actually, oh boy, and I have seen some cool stuff by Tracy Moreau that I really want to paint, guys. So that's the thing. I have been really trying to establish my own style this past year especially um, be because I'm a copycat. I co consider myself a copycat, meaning I just get inspired by other people's work. And so I love creating what they create. And... Um, yeah, good. I'll put a little bit more over here. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, so by, by using the same materials, all of a sudden I'm finding, well, that's what I like. That's the style I like. I've discovered that I'm very whimsical. Um, I do tend to like things that aren't realistic. I haven't painted very many. Not only that, because maybe it's a cop-out because I feel like I can't do it. I can't create a face or like a real animal or you know so I like to make things cutesy and because again I'm not try I'm not a trying to achieve some great work of art I am more in it for the process my craft channel is called my serenity crafts for a reason because crafting gives me peace and when I'm here when I'm doing this I'm in a zone and I'm like just happy to be, you know, creating. And whatever I create, I create, you know. And whatever happens, happens. All right, I want to do some hearts. I guess I'll do black. I have to put just a few black hearts because I didn't use hearts. I like to have love in my... So a couple little hearts. Good. And on the grass. That's it. Pop it in there. All right, so my desk, I'm so proud of myself because my desk is actually nice and neat. All right, that's it. That's my background. No, it's not because I really do need some white. 
You know what I did last time that I really loved was the um, the lace. I did like, it was like a doily. But I think I do need white. And I think I will use that doily. I'm going to use the doily. I don't know. I have two doilies and I prefer this one because it's like more open. This one's really thick and this one's more like open. So, and I struggle, I messed up with this one because I used the sprays with it and um, I was making a mess because the sprays were reenacting, reenacting, re reactivating. Anywho, watch out for that. That's not fun. So I started over actually. I did start over on the whole piece because um, it, it was, so this is light ivory. But I think I want to use white. And you know what? I have a metallic, I mean, a, yeah, this is called a pearlescent. That would be pretty. But I like the flat. I'm going to use straight titanium or snow white. And we can always add flecks of different blingy stuff. Let's see. Did uh, See, we still have a little metallic showing through. A little bit of gold. And I know it's a lot, but look, I have fun doing it. So look, I'm putting stuff away. I could do this off camera. I shouldn't do it now. Um, all right. So let me just do, I'm going to do some white. I think I can kind of make this look like a sunshine coming down, right? I think I'm going to do that. And then just have the, the other one coming from the bottom. White adds a lot it's contrast so here's the thing I haven't really taken um, a, a color theory class or and I don't color mix very often so you guys may know better than I do I don't know the reasons always for let's say do I want to do this I'm gonna just do half of the circle. I'm gonna need more paint. I can't believe I'm being so n not generous with the paint. Because I am usually, like there's a lot of paint on here guaranteed. And that's not necessarily how you wanna go about this, but hey. Just enjoy the process. That's the most important thing. Honestly, it's gonna, it's going to be a lot more frustrating if you're so particular. I mean, yeah, you want it to look a certain way and get a certain look. That's why I'm doing it. But I'm not going to cry over every... I'm just trying to make decisions. Decisions are not my thing. So I'm going to do it in threes. I'm going to do three areas with this white. And oops. And look, I'm not being that particular. It's it's just kind of like clouds. That's what it could be like, see? Anything goes in the art world. And then a little bit over here. I'm happy with that. But see how it brightens it up? And then I'm covering that too. Listen, it's part of the background. It's not, you know, at the end, if you want, you spatter or something to get the white flex. But this is part of the background, so. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay. But I am going to wipe this off because I do like this. Stencil. And, it, you know, that's the thing. When you're first out there buying stuff, you don't know what you like and what you don't like. Like a house. When you buy a house for the first time. I mean, some of you might because you know what you're doing. But I didn't know what I wanted. Anywho, I love my house. It's my fave. All right. Cool. Okay. So now I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to go to part two, which will be creating our focal images. And I have a lot of ideas. I told you guys, I want to, I, I kind of love the dragonfly. Got to go there. 
I'll probably just use these stamps and stamp out a few different flowers, but I really love the whimsy of just these fat, kind of crooked, uneven petals, you know? So don't feel like, just let it be, let it be loose. Um, I like this ladybug a lot, but like I said, I have this ladybug, I have this stamp that's gonna kind of help me with my, cause I'm not crazy about his little face. Um, I love the snail. I love the snail. And I have this other stamp. Uh, it's it's one of these, and I, I don't have it right here. But she has, she's sitting on a snail. It's a little fairy kind of riding a snail. So there's so much you can do. You don't have to do it exactly the way I am. I'm just using this little picture frame as my inspiration. But you guys may have other things that inspire you. So that's it. Part one creating the background and this is our March 2018 art journal page. I'll be back with part two. All right guys, thanks for watching.